our modern day-to-day -day lives are made of countless interactions with the objects we encounter. From the tiniest particles to the biggest structures. Join us as we explore the inside workings of the world around us. This is Inside Things. Microwave ovens. A common household appliance. It's amazing how the microwave oven heats up food immediately and instantly. The microwave oven makes use of radio waves at a set frequency that agitates water molecules in food. When these water molecules are agitated, they vibrate at the atomic level and generate heat, which is what cooks the food inside the oven. And because all the particles in the food are vibrating and generating heat at the same time, food in the microwave cooks more quickly than in a conventional oven, where heat travels slowly from outside the surface of the food inward. The radio waves used to cook food can also pass harmlessly through plastic, glass, and ceramic ware. It is this characteristic that keeps the plastic containers from melting and glasses from exploding while inside the microwave oven. Plus, it makes heating the food more effective because energy is concentrated on the food itself, excluding the containers. Another reason why microwave ovens are very efficient is because of the metal walls surrounding its interiors. Metals reflect the radio waves so that no waves can escape it. The waves are created inside the microwave oven via a device called a magnetron. The magnetron pulls electrons or tiny negatively charged particles off from a fine heated wire and then use magnets to rotate them around inside a vacuum. And as these electrons swirl around continuously, radio waves are generated and sent into the oven to cook the food. But note that magnetron technology wasn't invented to cook or heat food quickly. The device was first developed for the use of military radar systems for enemy detection. It was only in 1946 that the device was used to heat food. Radar system engineer Percy Spencer was testing out a new magnetron. During this time, he sensed a strange tingling sensation and noticed that the candy bar inside his pocket had melted. He then placed other food, popcorn, eggs, and such in front of the device to see if they all cooked. This began the new purpose of the magnetron device. Microphones. Our modern world is the one that is surrounded by constant communication. The media, the news, and most forms of entertainment have a sound component. Recorded and transmitted sound are made possible through the use of microphones. Let's go back to its history. The first functional microphone was first developed by Emil Berliner while working with Alexander Graham Bell on the first telephones. Berliner sold the invention to Bell in 1875 for $50,000. But how do microphones work? Microphones are transducers. Microphones are transducers, physical energy or sound vibrations and converts it to electrical energy or an electric signal. Microphones are usually used in tandem with speakers, are usually used in tandem with speakers, actually reverse transducers or a device that takes an electric signal and converts it back to sound. All microphones contain a similar component called the diaphragm. The diaphragm is a thin piece of material that vibrates when sound passes through it. Now, let's look at the types of microphones. 
Dynamic microphones. Dynamic microphones are designed to be used in live applications like concerts and public speaking. This type of microphone is more suited to rougher handling and does not pick up sound with as much clarity. Dynamic mics work by utilizing a thin plastic diaphragm that is attached to a coil of wire. This wire is placed near magnets at either the side or the center. When sound is picked up, the coil vibrates in relation to the magnet. This causes it to send a current that is then sent to a speaker. Condenser microphones Condenser microphones are much more sensitive than dynamic microphones. Like dynamic mics, the condenser utilizes a diaphragm to capture sound. But the similarities end there. Condenser mics contain an electronic component called a capacitor. Capacitors are able to store and release energy at a fast rate. The condenser is designed to utilize a capacitor with rigid metal plates. Sound vibrations cause these plates to store and release energy. The differences in the stored and released energy creates the electric current that are then released to speakers or recording equipment. Because condenser mics are more sensitive, they are preferred to be used in studio and recording applications, while dynamic microphones are mostly used for live applications. Today, microphones make electronic communication possible. Your laptop, your cell phone, and tablets all contain microphones. Carbonated water Carbonated water is water where carbon dioxide gas under pressure has been dissolved. Carbonated water is also commonly known as soda water, sparkling water, or fizzy water. Some of these contain additives, such as sodium. Carbonated water is made through the process called carbonation which causes the water to become effervescent. This refers to the bubble or the fizz in the liquid. Most types of carbonated water are prepared and packed in ready-to-drink bottles, as mineral water or as carbonated beverages such as soft drinks. Now let's talk more about carbonation. Soda water may contain a small amount of table salt, sodium citrate, sodium bicarbonate, potassium bicarbonate, potassium citrate, potassium sulfate, or disodium phosphate, depending on the bottler. These additives are often included to give a slight salty taste, but originally, these were added as preservatives. Carbonated water has a number of effects on the health. For one, alcohol in carbonated drinks are absorbed faster than alcohol in non-carbonated drinks. Higher water intake is another effect. Consumers who use carbonated water at home have a significantly higher water intake compared to non-consumers. This is mainly a result of its more distinctive flavor, compared to just plain water. Carbonated water may also ease digestion, particularly with users predisposed to gallstone formation. It may help those suffering with dyspepsia or constipation, improving overall digestion and the emptying of the gallbladder. Sodium-rich carbonated water may also have health benefits for the heart. It's possible that the use of carbonated water may reduce cardiovascular risks for postmenopausal women. On the other hand, carbonated water may actually worsen irritable bowel syndromes. It may cause bloating and gas as an effect of the release of carbon dioxide in the digestive tract. However, it has yet to be proven that intake of carbonated water may make your teeth and bones brittle.
the metric system. Most of the countries in the world share a common system of agreed-upon units when it comes to measuring things. The way we count distance, time, volume, and other quantifiable measurements are mostly based on the metric system. In fact, the metric system is so universal that almost all countries follow it, save for the three, USA, Myanmar, and Liberia. But what is the metric system? The metric system is an internationally agreed-upon convention where all measurements are based on. It is based on the decimal system, where all measurements and conversions are based on powers of 10. Originally, the metric system was first introduced by the First French Republic in 1799. The system itself was based on the French metre du archive and kilogramme du archive, which were units of measurements used to measure distance and mass. Before the metric system, other measurements from different cultures were also used. One of the most notable is the imperial or the English system of measurement. In 1875, the French government passed all the prototype units of measurements to the General Conference on Weights and Measures. The GCPM would later on in 1960 release the SI or the Système International des Unites, a list of all the conventions of units of measurement. This is what we know today more commonly as the metric system. Here are some of the advantages of using the metric system. By utilizing the decimal system, it is easier to scale up and scale down conversions. It is usually just a matter of moving decimal places. The metric system also utilizes prefixes that also reflect its decimal system. Some examples are the prefix centi, meaning a hundredth, or milli, meaning a thousandth. There's also only one measurement for each unit of measure. This means that a meter is always as long as a meter, or that a gram always has the same mass. Whereas in other systems, such as the English system, different units of measure mean different things. Take for example the measurements for length, like the inch, foot, and the yard. For the most part, having an internationally agreed-upon system of measurement holds countless advantages, especially in the fields of science. The applications in engineering, medicine, physics, and geology are only some of the countless fields that affect the lives of the people across the world. And it is all made possible because of the metric system. Bulletproof Vests Bulletproof vests are also known as body armors. There are different types of bulletproof vests. The most common is the soft one, that's usually worn by the police or the private security. This type can't stop ammunition of big caliber. Hard plate reinforced vests are needed when heavy ammunition is involved and is usually worn as a default equipment by the army. How are bulletproof vests made? They usually contain advanced woven fibers that can be sewn into the vests or other soft clothing. The fibers form a tight interlaced net that disperses the energy of the bullet, reducing its speed until it stops, thus lessening its impact. One of the most effective materials used in body armor is the Kevlar fiber. Although light as cloth, it's five times stronger than a piece of steel and about the same weight. When interlaced into a dense net, the material produced can absorb a great amount of energy. The fibers are twisted individually and then covered by a double coat of resin and plastic. Another common material for bulletproof vests is the Vectron, which is two times stronger than the Kevlar. New trends in armored vest making include the spiderweb, feathers, and carbon nanotubes. Now how do these strong fibers stop bullets? Well, 
bullets are able to incite great damage because of the focused blunt trauma. In other words, bullets focus all of its impact in a reduced area, increasing the penetration rate. So bulletproof vests are designed to counter that. It spreads the energy laterally over the entire vest and deforms the bullet at the same time. The system works similarly to that of a soccer goal. Notice how a ball that hits the net don't necessarily bounce back strongly, as the collision is completely inelastic. When hard, protective pieces are added, the bullets are deflected instead of stopped. But with a soft body armor, deflecting the bullet becomes almost impossible. Instead becomes trapped by the material and thought. So that's how the strong fibers of the vests are able to stop bullets. Bluetooth In this day and age, wireless is the way we connect. Common household devices make use of radio waves, such as the television set, the radio, and even the cordless phones. The Wi-Fi also sends and receives data via a wireless means, to and from a router. These technologies show how on a daily basis we make use of the technology of radio waves that send and receive signals invisible in the air. Now what is Bluetooth? The Bluetooth came as a relief in solving the usual tangle of cable wires we often find behind our desktop computers. It works in a similar radio wave technology, but designed specifically to work only in short distances, from only about 10 meters or 30 feet. Bluetooth technology is commonly used in downloading photos from a phone or a digital camera to a computer or connecting a wireless mouse to a laptop. It may also be used in hands-free headsets for work or when one needs to take a call while driving. These electronic gadgets that work with this wave are made with built-in antennas. These work as the transmitters and receivers so they can simultaneously send and receive wireless signals to other Bluetooth devices. Let's take a closer look. Bluetooth sends and receives radio waves in a band of up to 79 different frequencies or channels centered on 2.45 GHz, set apart from radio, television, and cell phones, and reserved for use by industrial scientific, and medical gadgets. One of the major plus points of the Bluetooth technology is its transmitter's short-range abilities. Because of this, it consumes almost no power. And because the signals don't travel far, it can be considered more secure than other wide-range wireless networks, such as the Wi-Fi. It can automatically detect and connect to one another, and up to eight devices can communicate at any one time, but they still don't interfere with each other because each paired device uses a different one from the 79 channels available. That's the power of the Bluetooth. Drones A drone is a type of UAV, or unmanned aerial vehicle, a growing category of aerial vehicles. UAVs are notable for having no human pilot inside the vehicle because it is either controlled automatically by a computerized guiding system or remotely by a person. The first drones were actually used for military applications 
which include reconnaissance and even warfare. But during the last decade, drones have enjoyed commercial success as a consumer product. But how does a drone work? The drones of today employ a multi-rotor design. Basically, these drones are helicopters that have multiple rotors. The multiple rotor design serves two functions. One is for providing the lift which makes the drone fly and two, the changing rotor speeds in different directions of the drone help to steer the drone. Drones are typically radio-controlled, which means the controls that command the drone are sent wirelessly through radio waves. How do drones fly? Drones fly when the rotors turn and produce thrust and torque. This in turn propels the drone upward and make it fly. The multi-rotor design helps stabilize a drone during flight. It is especially helpful in photography and videography applications where a steady flight path is desired. A typical drone usually has four rotors, but it's also not uncommon to see drones with as much as eight or even more. By changing speed on different rotors, drones are able to maneuver itself up or down, left and right, and rotate 360 degrees. Today, drones are more readily accessible for commercial use. From toy models to professional models, there is a type of drone available in the market for that application. This also means that we might be seeing more drones than ever before. Most movies and TV shows already employ drones to shoot aerial video. Media outlets also employ drones to deliver footage from the sky like traffic or hard-to-reach places. Perhaps one of the most striking applications is the use of drones for delivering our packages. In some countries, shipping companies like Amazon and DHL have already begun using drones to deliver packages straight to people's homes. And so it seems, expect to see more drones in your day-to-day -day life soon. There you have it, another episode down the drain. Still, there are countless more things to explore. Join us next time as we look and know more about the world around us. See you next time on Inside Things.